Okay, first, obviously, there isn't a specific measurement for how dangerous a road can specifically be. And overall, pretty much every road in the world can be deadly. But I picked what I thought were some of the most uniquely deadly roads. Also, to clarify, this list includes any specific trail made for cars to drive on it. So bikes, buses, and just walking can be allowed, but you must be enabled to drive it. Passage de Goy is a 2.6 mile long stretch of road that is an alternate route for getting to this little turtle shell on a stick shaped peninsula. Anyway, back to the road. Passage de Goy at first just seems like a normal concrete road that connects two mentioned lands. But sometimes the road vanishes. Twice a day, actually. You see, this road is very, very low down to sea level, so when the tide rises, the road doesn't and is left under the waves. That means you must have very good timing when trying to drive on this road. However, something that puzzles me is how was this road even built? Wouldn't the workers realize that the tide was pushing them away? And on your right, you can see a 2,000 foot drop. And don't worry, it'll be very easy to take pictures since there's no guardrails. If you've seen other lists about dangerous roads, there is one I found prominently left out, Kishwar Road. This ticket to Suicide City is, like I said, guardrailless and is high, but also more. It's completely unpaved, it gets very windy, and it's a two-way road. And there are several bends on this road that are blocked by the mountain, so you can't even see if a car is coming or not. The path connects the Jammu region of India and Kashmir, and is only about, uh, roughly a hundred miles. Definitely not for the faint of heart, or any body part for that matter. Bam Road in Russia doesn't hang around the side of a mountain like most people would expect a dangerous road to, but that doesn't prove it's not dangerous. Bam Road is unmaintained all 2,700 miles of it. Most noticeably, Bam Road's bridges that look like they're literally a pile of dying, rotting trees used to cross a gap a hundred years ago. It's awful. And this is in Russia too. So falling off these crippling railless bridges ensures hypothermia, at least. Not only that, but parts of the road that aren't bridges include nothing but gravel. It's in such poor condition that only the most extreme off-road vehicles have a chance of making it out okay. In Soviet Russia, road drives you. The Stelvio Pass in Italy looks like a bunch of unwound string. It's not very long compared to the other roads, only 47 miles, but 47 miles of pure mental agony. <coughs> this road includes several really tight turns as you slowly ascend or descend the hill. To pour a cup of salt on an open wound, the road lacks sufficient guardrails, meaning one wrong move means 10 minutes of slowly tumbling down the rest of the road you hoped you would never see again. And the worst thing is, that could be the last thing you see. Tainman Mountain Road has a similar feel to the one Stelvio Pass had, except this one is a little more extreme. Tainman Mountain Road has 99 really, really tight turns. And all to get to this cool temple at the top, nicknamed Tainman Temple. But the fact that Tain Mountain Road has more tight turns than Stelvio Pass in a shorter distance means that this road is probably a nightmare. Well, Stelvio Pass is a nightmare as well, but this is probably like a nightier nightmare. Plus, there's a moment on this road that you'll not only be crossing on a bridge, but also going through a tunnel. In less than a minute. 
However, this one's only 6.7 miles, so I definitely recommend taking one of those cable cars. The Dalton Highway is a 414 mile, or more coincidentally, a 666 kilometer long road that stretches from the middle to top of Alaska. There is little to no civilization anywhere on the trip, and if something were to go wrong, say your engine blows up, you're practically screwed. Albeit, you're typically screwed if your engine blows up and you're inside the car anyway, it is even more stressful here, for the temperature once reached negative 82 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 63 degrees Celsius, or 210 degrees Kelvin. A more important factor is that it's incredibly easy for something like that to happen, for the road is constantly bombarded with crash trucks, heavy snow, tons of hail, rapid blizzards, and poor visibility. Due to all these factors, Alaska has a rule whether your vehicle can even drive on this highway or not. Zoshi La Paz is a literal masterpiece and links Ladakh and Kashmir in India. What makes this road so unbearable is that it's completely intoxicated with traps, 24-7. Traps unique to this road that don't show up on any of the other roads. First of all, the mud can make this route an impassable journey, making the cars sink into the ground like quicksand. Second, the livestock is very active, making traffic common. This combined with the mud makes it seem like a horror movie as the cars go down one by one. The 5.6 mile or 9 kilometer long road is also closed during winter due to painfully heavy snow. Youngest Road, or what most people understandably call the Death Road, is a 35 mile or 56 kilometer long precarious road on the side of a mountain in Bolivia. The road connects La Paz and Coroico and is officially considered the deadliest road to drive on. Around 200 to 300 people lose their lives by driving off the railless sides yearly. But the big problem is that this road has cars coming from both directions, so cars will approach each other head on. But with barely enough space for one car sometimes, two cars is catastrophic. So they often will back up until there's a part of the road they think will be large enough for them to pass each other. And somehow, one of them builds courage to drive on the edge. However, this route has thankfully been replaced with another route that's much safer. But that doesn't stop risky and easily persuaded motorheads from driving on old death road. Don't let the name Fairy Meadows fool you. It's not one of those winged ball fairies that give you a free life if you put them in a jar. Oh no, it's the big fairies from Majora's Mask. We just got done talking about a road that doesn't have enough space for two cars to pass each other. This one is worse with not enough room for a bike in some spots. Look at this! How does someone drive past this? This road is crippling into a deserted desert of a road. It turns out you can't even drive beyond this point with your car. I don't know what they do with the cars, but you need a bike to keep moving. And it's not paved, so bike riding can easily be a problem. To make matters worse, heavy snowfall and rain aren't exactly uncommon. And you have to drive through this for about 10 miles, or 16 kilometers. And here is the mother of all mothers, the somehow not taken down for safety purposes, the ultimate worst road to drive on without having driven on any of these roads. Karakoram Highway. What makes this road so bad is it's basically a hybrid of almost every previously mentioned road, and more. 
It's got flat sections, mountain sections, water sections, hairpin turn sections, has little to no guardrails, and is hit with many different types of natural disasters. By which I mean landslides, flash floods, hail, avalanches, snow, and more. All of which are unpredictable and more common than you would originally think. It connects China and Pakistan, and the China side is actually paved. But that won't make this ride much easier for you. Not to mention the air is kind of lacking at the top of the mountain area. And there are commonly bandits along this roller coaster. And you have to endure 800 miles or 1,287 kilometers of it to pass through all the way. It's so bad that the road recommends bringing a whole survival kit. With more stuff in the list than a week in the wild kit would have. And that's in case if you manage to survive one of the apocalyptic disasters that can happen on this road. But your vehicle didn't. I doubt I'll ever go to that area, but if I do, I'm just going to take a boat. So I know some of you might want to take a bike and race down Passage to Goy and pretend you're in a movie barely escaping the tide. Me too. However, I, I don't recommend it. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed and try avoiding these roads for future trips. If you have a top 10 idea you want me to do, put it in the comments below and it could become a future video. And thanks for watching. Off we to Zane. You are way too loud, sir.